Hi everyone, I'm Dave Giancola, joined again by Mike Trosel for another USGA Championship Classic finish. Now believe it or not, no one had won three consecutive U.S. amateurs in the nearly 100-year history of the championship. Not Bob Jones, not Jack Nicklaus, but that's exactly what was at stake for Tiger Woods in the 36-hole final of the 1996 U.S. amateur against Steve Scott. But you know, Dave, for such a dominant amateur player, Tiger had a tendency to fall behind in these championship matches. He trailed in both 1994 and 1995, and yet again in 1996, he fell four down through nine holes. And it didn't stop there. The deficit grew to five down with just 16 holes to play, but in front of the largest crowd to watch an amateur golf event since Bob Jones won the Grand Slam in 1930, Tiger began the comeback. And Dave, we pick up the action as Tiger attempts to cut into Scott's lead on the final 18. And some bugs buzzing around today in the Portland area. Overcast skies have replaced hot sunshine. Important shot here. Don't want to miss it right. He tries to take the left side route. That's his, his line, his left, not to the right. We're looking right now. We want to go left here with the look. He has killed that one, Johnny. That is absolutely left. A little more left. There's the woods. Yes, I am. <laughs> From the blimp, no less. Thank you very much. <laughs> Scott's going with a very intriguing way to play this hole. You know, being 463 yards, you would think that he'd go with an iron. I would, and now he's switched. All week he's been going short right with an iron, and with Tiger's blistering drive there, I guess he figures I just cannot give up 60, 70, 80 yards on this guy because he might birdie it from there. So I got to go with the draw drive. And I would assume uh, he would go down that left side with that little draw of his. We'll see. He's always been going right. And that is way right headed toward the gallery. Try to turn back, but it's in the gallery. Going the right. Well, he's going to make this whole play really tough. And it looks huge advantage to Tiger Woods here. They've played eight, and Steve Scott is still looking for his first victory on a hole. Tiger, we Tiger Woods has cut into the lead. He's two down. Well, this swing, you can see he's aiming way right. He's aiming the right edge of the fairway, which is uh, playing for a big swinging hook. And watch it. Watch this position here. Pretty good right there. And then he drops it in. Watch that. See a little drop in move. Right. And watch how the club goes inside out big time. And he pushes it right at the right edge of the fairway. And it does not come back enough. Let's take a look at his head action. He's so still the first half of his backswing. Watch this. Now to move off at the end when his left shoulder pulls it off, comes right back to where he started. Hangs back just a little and then drives through. And let's take a look at his lie. It is down grain, but uh, from there he can't reach the green. He's just going to put it in a position where he could hit a nice wedge in there and give himself a chance for a scrambling par. Well, he's got 240 yards to the hole, Johnny. If he could get a flyer and really get it scooting, he might get it there, but unlikely. On the ground running, little hook. Just trickles into the very first cut of rough. Tiger Woods out drove him 113 yards this hole. That's all, huh? That's all. He's got 127 left of the hole. <laughs> That's a different area code. 460 some odd yard par four. Well, Tiger needs to um, throw it in there where uh, he knows that um, he forces the issue and gives Steve, uh, forces him to have to make par. So what's he going with here, Raj? Uh, just a pitching wedge, John. And he, you know, the concern here is for those little collection areas on the right side of the green. He can't really afford to go in right of the hole. That's flirting with going down a large depression on the right side. So I'm sure he's looking left of the hole here and you know, just try to force Steve Scott to get the ball up and down. Well, he's in a birdie opportunity right here. Kind of shallow hit, Roger. I think he'll just try to, you know, just a three-quarter wedge for him. Just try to keep it down and keep the flight of the ball controlled. I think he'll hit that little punch shot. We'll see. Oh, full 
follow through. Enough to the hole. And another chance to cut into the lead of Steve Scott. Two up through 26 in this championship match. Welcome back to Pumpkin Ridge. The action at the par four ninth and Steve Scott getting ready for his third to the par four. Roger, just a uh, nice flattish green to hit to for him. Plenty of green to work with. Yeah, it is. He's got plenty of green. 56 yards to the hole. 35 to the front. Try to land something on the front. Skip it back there a little bit. Let it release back to the hole. Get up, get up. This is a well played shot. Beautiful shot. Mm. Now we'll see if Tiger can make that putt, knowing that he's probably going to make four. He is cool and confident, but what about his goals later on in his golfing life? Well, you talk about some lofty goals. I'd like to win a lot of tournaments. As the, I mean, shoot, you know, I don't think there will be another, another Jack Nicklaus, but, but I'd like to win as many as I can, and uh, preferably majors. And it would be a great start if I could, if I could win this U.S. Amateur Championship now. Johnny, if he won the U.S. Amateur, <laughs> only 19 more majors left. <laughs> but uh, you got to give him credit for being confident. Yeah, he just poke at him one at a time. And what about the last 15 months for Steve Scott? Not only not only graduates from high school, but a semifinalist last year, and then tied for ninth at the NCAA Championships, which Tiger Woods won. Qualified for the U.S. Open with a birdie on the final hole of sectional qualifying on the tough 18th at Bay Hill. Made the cut after shooting fine scores in the 70s for the first two rounds. Did finish 105 and then now a finalist in the U.S. Amateur again. And Tiger said he knew he was a good player. I think he was second at the Santa Hannah and second at the Northeast Amateur. So uh, he's definitely a good player. He's not just a, you know, once a year type good player. Solid player, but this is a key putt, Roger. It is, and this will move just a little bit to Tiger's right. Very makeable. This would be a big half for Steve Scott. Should Tiger miss this, but he'd love to get out of here with a tie. Yeah, Woods dodged the bullet on eight. It'd be a little turnaround. Yeah. We haven't seen him make a putt this length all day. Steve Scott and Stride. How much more confident is that? No comparison. And we're going to the back nine, which this man until this morning has owned. Take a look at this. Snuck it in that side and loves it. So on to the 10th they go. Par three. Long par three of 204 yards, and Tiger's still pumping his fist well after making that birdie. And this is how he's played the back nine, Johnny, no doubt about it. If he had his choice, he'd play the back nine all week. And this is a dangerous time in the match right now uh, for Steve Scott. Um, he's dropped, uh, of course, four holes, this front nine, losing number nine, and not taking advantage of number eight when he had a chance, which was really important. So. He needs to turn this around, somehow win a hole, even tie a couple holes wouldn't be bad. Just stop it for a while, stop the bleeding. Tiger Woods has a USGA match record of 41 and three. And we've talked about it a lot this week. How you have to be not only good and talented to compile that kind of record, but a little lucky. Tiger will even admit that. And also, maybe most importantly, is just a will to win, just to refuse to lose. Uh, the resolve inside to say, I got plenty of holes left. I'm the better player. I'm going to win. And right now, if you're handicapping this twosome, this, uh, this match right here, 
Scott is one up, but in reality, he's probably one down going into this bag nine. I, I would say that Tiger has got about a two uh, uh, hole deficit, I mean, advantage over Scott. So Scott's going to have to play well. This is a six iron. Wind helping slightly. This ball started a little left of the hole, trying to cut back. Safe play. Pretty solid, Roger. He's sort of picking his spots where he goes for the pins, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with uh, uh, what he's doing right now. Well, Johnny, as we said earlier, he is now controlling the match. He didn't have any control in the morning 18, but now he's dominating everything that happens in this match with his shot selection and, and uh, and uh, application. Well, this is the same spot that uh, Scott knocked it stiff this morning with a draw four iron bouncing off the right side. They started at the right mound again. It's trying to draw, but I don't know if it's going to get all the way back. It will not. And that's, that's a really tough spot fast. there. Yes, that's really quick chip shot. On the short side of the green for Steve Scott, who's trying to hang on to his one up lead over the two-time defending champion. Steve Scott at the par 3 10th with a very difficult second shot, Roger. He certainly does. He'll have to land this ball short of the green in the, the first cut of rough, and he's going to have to hope it kills it. It will come down off that slope very quickly and move to his left. This is... To get this within 10 feet of the hole would be pretty good, John. What happens if he just hits a big flop shot and lands about six feet short of the hole? Won't that just go 10 or 12 feet by also? Well, it will, but it's it's going to be next to impossible to keep the ball from getting past the hole in that kind of range. Yeah. In other words, I would just say to myself, give myself a 6, 8, 10, 12 footer, and I'll go ahead and flop it up there and not try to hang it in that rough short. I don't want to take myself out of the hole. So interesting to see if he just doesn't play it way forward, which he's doing, and flop it in there on a fly. <laughs> Unbelievable. How about that shot, folks? 32 for Scott. What a shot. That could be the shot of the day right there. That ball would have gone by a good 10, 12 feet, John, but not the hook, not the cross, but... The ebb and flow of match play. <laughs> Once again, now Tiger up against it now and needs to make if he doesn't want to fall two down again. Well, this is not what Tiger was expecting to happen at all. He yeah, figured he'd lag it up there and let the guy miss his 12 footer on huh, Roger. <laughs> Absolutely, that was the way it was planned on paper. <laughs> now he's got a putt that he's got to hit up high to the left. Just let it gather speed down the slope. Break pretty good to his right. The only thing he can do is he can uh, go ahead and put a little more pace on it, take out about 50% of the break. Of course, every time I ever see anybody try to do that, they never make it. Have you ever noticed that, Roger? That's right. <laughs> you got to try to hit him like you would any other time. If you try to try a different line, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Roger, we're watching the expression on uh, Steve Scott's face, and he's still in a little bit of disbelief. thing broke off the charts there folks the lead is back to two up and this is the very first hole that Steve Scott has won in this afternoon match takes 10 holes to get it another look he plays it right forward and stands way up by his left toe opens the blade wide open then takes a big swing and just slides the club underneath it lands it just about where I thought he might about five feet short and as Roger Malpe so aptly says he had a reckless opinion and he had about a two-foot vertical jump there. That was right there up there with Corey Pavin's jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to admire what Steve Scott is doing here because most of the people in this gallery want to see Tiger Woods three-peat. Every time you go out on the course, everyone wanted to know where Tiger Woods was all week long. He's been the focal point. But Steve Scott, two up, 
as we set up the par 5 11th. Here's one of those hook holes we were talking about. Look at how it shapes around that bunker right there on the left. That's a 266 carry, which I don't think Steve Scott can do. So Steve's got to sneak it between that shadow and the bunker where Tiger is no problem. He knocked it over there easily with a three wood. But Tiger's been driving it through the trees on the right. In fact, this morning he hit it up against the tree dead. And uh, if you can't hit the ball in the fairway, it's reachable in two, definitely reachable for Tiger with a mid iron. Sort of a blind second shot because there's a hump in there and then it drops down from here down into the green. And you want to be able to put the ball in position where you can have some green to work with. Don't short side it. And you can see that pin is in the way right corner, brings in this big collection area where this little drainage box is on the left side of your screen into play. Big tee shot. Ball. He likes it. Go. He likes it. It's a good one. The only time will tell how big that pitch shot was for him and winning this match, Roger, if he wins. It certainly gave him life. He was the one pumping his fist going off the last green. Yep. And then Tiger is going again with the driver, which I'm really surprised. He does not need this club to hit the screen with about a four iron. To the, I don't know why he's going to do it. All it does is bring the trees. He has trouble. Every dogleg left holes where he's had trouble. The, the most trouble driving it, and I would have thought he would go with the three wood here, but um, he's in, been in the right rough and right trees almost every time on this hole. How surprising is that graphic? Four of the seven par fives he's lost. He's got it teed up high. This thing is going to get some air time. I'll tell you that. This is probably in the nine to ten second range on air time. He's taking it over the left side of the left bunker. That is huge. What's your time state, Johnny? I think it was almost nine seconds, which is incredible. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Probably 3.30. But the big blow delivered so far came at the par three tenth as Steve Scott improved his lead to two up. Like a couple of kids on a date, perhaps with destiny, Steve Scott and girlfriend Christy Hummel. The NFL on NBC back starting at the special new time, 12 noon Eastern time. Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, and Gator Chris Collinsworth in the studio to get you ready for the season in football's finest hour. That's 12 noon Eastern time next Sunday. I imagine Chris Collinsworth probably back in his easy chair in Cincinnati rooting on this Gator, Steve Scott. What's the difference in distance, Roger? I think Tiger hit it like 357. Well, they, he hit it 67 yards by him. Oh man, <laughs> let's put it that way. And and Steve Scott nutted it right. He hit it right in the right in the middle of the face, didn't as, he? As good as he could. He, he hit a perfect drive, as, just as all he could hope for. But he's left himself 255 yards to the hole. He's got 243 at the front edge. And the hard part of this shot is he's going to have to work it left to right around these trees. And we haven't seen him hit any kind of fade today. He may have blocked it right, but he hasn't hit anything that has gone left to right. It's not a shot that's comfortable for him. Well, let's see if he's got that shot. Aim left, take it back slow, and lash down on it like Tiger. It fades every time. Nice. Look at the face open. See how he's got the face open right there? Yeah, but it's drawing about three yards. Well, that's his idea of a fade, right? It's as close to a fade as he's got. That's it. That's a good shot right there by Steve. Watch this. Just brushes it right off the grass. See, it lifts the club up there. Just picks it off cleaner and a whistle. That's a good shot right there by Steve. And that's an important shot with Tiger out there, 357. Roger, you said that uh, he's got to go right between these two big evergreens here. You can see him right there. Uh, nice opening. It's, it's sort of a neat design here, uh, the way those trees come into play. It gives you a shot, but it gives you an exciting shot. Well, it's very similar to the shot he had this morning, a little longer. He had 169 for his third shot in the morning round here between these trees. This one's from 196. He's got 184 to the front, so I think he can go with a hard six iron here and carry that bunker. And it's sort of a blind shot. The pin is go. sitting right Perfect. between the trees, so uh, he just has to go up. I think he could almost go over if he had to, but he will just go over about five-sixths five of the way up on that left tree when it crosses by its branches. Let's 
Seems to be taking a lot of time over this shot. Well, this is sort of an uncomfortable shot because you're looking at gallery, you're looking at trees, and uh, it's uh, tough to get the right line, so you've got to really concentrate extra on this one. Don't want to miss it right. Hits it right and throw it away the edge. He's hit it right through the gap, a little bit left of the hole it's drawing. Watch how softly, that's a little bad luck. There's a ridge right there that's going down into the second part of the back part of the green. But a very fine shot. Well, there was a pretty good turn of events in the morning round on this same par 5 11th. Tiger got into trouble off the tee, but uh, gets a nice second shot out here into the fairway through the trees, Johnny. There's a little hooded, uh, looks like a six iron. Uh, around that uh, John Deere tractor, a heck of a shot right there to give him at least an opportunity to make par or birdie. And then once again with the same similar shot that Roger mentioned, this again through the evergreen uprights. And he hits a nice high draw shot. We picked it up with our uh, overhead camera there from the blimp, and you see that drawing in there just about 16 feet left of the hole. But Steve Scott had an answer to that shot. Tiger had this birdie try. It's a great putt here. It's breaking right, right in the hole, and flattens out, and he wanted that big time. So Steve Scott had the birdie putt. Watch this beautiful stroke. Throws it out there about four inches, right in the heart. Tiger battled, but it was Steve Scott who won this morning's battle, who will win this afternoon's battle. Every hole becoming more crucial. Again, this is a 36-hole championship final. Steve Scott was five up after the morning 18. Tiger Woods is now just two down. Steve Scott with a two-up lead. And I, I almost believe Steve Scott might have as easy or easier shot than Tiger does, Roger, because he's got sort of working right with the flat of the green, and Tiger's got to go up, up and on to that uh, pin placement. The only problem he has, John, is the ball's up against the intermediate cut of rough, uh -huh. and it's going to maybe affect the heel of his club as he tries to hit it. Uh, but other than that, that, that's a bit of a bad break there. Those are the kind of things that distract you from concentrating on what you want to do, and, uh, and you got to play it probably like a. You can, sometimes on that shot, you can play a sand wedge or lob wedge so far back in your stance that you turn it into about an eight iron, and you sort of chip and run, uh, chip and and hit that kind of shot, a driving shot with spin. And that way you get onto the ball cleaner than if you try to brush it. Let's see if he plays it off his right toe or behind his right foot. He's practicing the exact same lie. This is a very good move right here. Do you see that? He's seen if that's going to bother this club. That's a, that's a mature type of uh, approach to that shot. Sort of let your uh, conscious, subconscious know that, yeah, I can get through there cleanly without it grabbing. And he is playing that uh, looks like a sand wedge back in a stance. We'll drive it in there with a little bit of one hop spin. And he plays a, you see how low this is? This is a sand wedge, folks. Watch how low. He sets his wrist angle and then drives him in there and takes loft off the club and only hits that ball about waist high is all with a sand wedge. So he'll come down, de-loft the club. He turns it into about a nine iron. And see how the shaft angle is still ahead of the club head? That's good form. Well, this part of Tigers now is a little bit of everything. It's uphill, and then the last half of the putt will be downhill. It's actually pretty straight in the first part. Might even try to work a little bit left, but once it gets over the crest of the hill, it'll start moving down and to the right. This putt could get away from him a little bit, can it? Oh, I sure could. You could blow this by the whole six feet without uh, trying too hard at all. Remember when I talked about, you know, the putts that are running uh, away from the south, of course, going uh, to the north, are slower than they appear most of the time. And this putt here is just the opposite. This could be more downhill than your eye picks up because it's running down with the drainage of this valley. Because you say, gee, it's going to be slow the first half. I'm putting up the hills at the darker colored grass. He drives it through that. It's going to take off on him.
exciting. That draws a smile from Steve Scott. There was never a doubt. How good is the 10th and 11th pole bender for TV here, huh? <laughs> One up is the lead. That's exciting. Ben Cole, Steve Scott chips it in. Answers with an eagle. And you talk about fired up. This thing about five feet from the hole. It's center cut with the break. He knows it's in about right now. Now. Oh, and there's how many? It's the same patented fist pumping that. That one took it to a new level right there. It might have been. <laughs> Pretty good at TPC at Sawgrass in 94. That was a similar look. And then uh, look at that. He's enjoying it. That's a nice reaction. Really, instead of, you know, upset, he's enjoying the, the heroics. So here they come to the par 3-12th, 134 yards. This little short but dangerous, beautiful hole with the pond left. And we have a hole location today that makes them even uh, think about the water more than normal and you can see why it's front left and it's only about 14 15 feet uh, to where it'll kick down into the hazard if you come up short left so the smart play really is probably front right just on the green to the right perfect shot for Steve Scott to play it out there about 12 15 feet right of the hole with a draw and it'll kick left and then spin left Tiger doesn't usually play that shot even though he can and uh, he usually goes right at it. And uh, Roger, is this going to be a turbo wedge or a nine iron? What do we got here? It's going to be a turbo wedge. <laughs> He's plenty pumped up right now. As a matter of fact, I think it's a concern that he got so fired up after that one, you got to get yourself calm back down you know, before the next shot. Definitely taken a little more time the last few shots, which I, I sort of like the resolve that's there. He's, a, he's a really, really focusing middle of the stance and he's uh, been, uh, distracted by a few bugs uh, today but that's about it back in the stance that helps take the loft off you a little more distance got this ball going at the hole just left Needs it to spin back. It does. And after an eagle, Tiger has a birdie in mind. Now at 12. Now just so if you're following Tiger, you know that this hole is 134 yards. He just hit the ball probably seven yards past the hole on a fly. So it carried about 140 yards with spin with a wedge, just a comfortable wedge. <laughs> Most train pros hit a wedge about 120, 125. Steve Scott still relaxed. Playing with the gallery even a little bit. Well, he better take a deep breath because he needs a good one right here. This is a nightmare. here. Is it okay? It sounded a little bit thick. A little chunky and at the right side of the green. Not all bad from there, though, really. It's got it a little heavy. That's from about 25 feet through about four feet of fringe. We'll move to his left. And got underneath right away. Took a little hop coming out of the fringe. Well, should Tiger make this one, this place will go ballistic. <laughs> it's downhill. Actually, a very quick and dangerous putt. He has to be very careful with this putt. It will move pretty good from his left to right. And the kind of putt that can get away from you, John. Well, it'll be the first chance to be even since the third hole this morning. And that was a long time ago. So uh, this indeed is a, a lot of times it's easy. You watch other sports. It's easy to, when you're trailing, to make a run and get back close to even. But it's hard to sustain it. So. You'll see that in sports time and time again. You'll be in golf, five down, five to go. You might win the last five, and then you usually lose the playoff. What he needs to do is, once he gets here, he got to be mentally tough enough, if he finally gets squares, to go ahead and finish it off. Because you finally, when you get back to even, you go, Whew, man, I finally got back. You know, so interesting to see how he handles this. We mentioned the Trip Keeney match in 94, him being four down after the morning 18, but he rallied to win six of the last 10 holes in that match. 
He was also one down to Buddy Marucci last year, and he won both of those matches two up. And you can see this is uh, no gimme putt. He's aiming way left. So he's aiming at least a foot left or more. All he had to do was put some pace on it. He read it perfectly. He did. He just, well, he respected the putt, and, and rightfully so, John. If it was the kind of putt he got carried away with, he could he could have a lot of work left. So he hit a good speed putt. He just, not quite hard enough, only a fraction harder, and it goes. So Steve Scott has to finish up this par to have the hole and remain one up. He is naturally a great putter. This guy is a fantastic putter. Calls himself a very streaky putter. He's been nothing but hot in this championship match. And Scott one up with six holes to play. And another reminder, NFL kickoff 96 at 4 o'clock Eastern time right here on NBC. Our team of football experts, Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, and Chris Collinsworth get you ready for the new season. That's next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. NFL kickoff 96 to the 13th, par four. And you can see this hole, it's a narrow hole. The fairway is only 26 yards wide. Sets up really for a straight ball, even a fade. A good, good hole for Tiger Woods because it is just 410 yards. So Tiger could very well hit an iron off this tee, Mar three wood. And uh, it is a birdie opportunity if you can drive it in the fairway, in this narrow fairway. Trees on the right do come into play off the tee if you push it. And you can see a beautiful view from behind. Long, narrow, old-fashioned green. Not a lot of movement to it. Just a little back to front and to the right. I mean the left, I'm sorry. Well, Tiger's uh, patiently waiting for this large gallery to try to fit into this narrow corridor of trees. <laughs> And it's just almost impossible. This golf course, if there's any negative to a big tournament like this, is some of the holes are pretty crowded uh, for uh, big spectators. And uh, uh, it uh, takes a while to move them in position. You're kicking up a cloud of dust here, Johnny. Almost looks like it's yeah. foggy yeah. from the tee. Yeah. So going with an iron, Roger? As he has done the last so many days. Again, yeah. a two iron here. Wants to hit it just about over the bill of his cap on the left side with a high towering fade. Watch the arm speed. Take it back slow. Whip it down. Just, just incredible. He had that arm speed when he was four years old. I mean, I was watching that. He took it back slow. Boom! Right through when he was four. Well, legend has it that he shot a 48 at age three. And he I believe it after seeing that swing. I don't know how high you can count though at that age. That might be the highest he could count to. <laughs> so a little dangerous. Gonna hit it down the right side inside those trees, Roger, and bring it back. It's gonna need a bounce left. He liked it all the way. He knew it was okay. Beauty. Both safely in the fairway. No one in the hundred year history of this event has won three straight U.S. Amateur Championship. Tiger Woods has his eye on that. No man has claimed more U.S. Amateur Championships than the great Bobby Jones in 1930 at Marion. Jones claimed his fifth and final amateur title completing his unprecedented Grand Slam. He won five U.S. Amateur Championships in seven years. Five total for Jones, Jerome Travers with four, Walter Travis with three, 14 players with two, including Tiger Woods. Roger. Well, Tiger's left himself 137 yards to the hole. This will just be a pitching wedge for him. Ten on 12 paces on the left side of the green. Really important. I think he hit a good shot here and keep the heat up on Steve Scott, John, because uh, Steve Scott has 123 yards to the hole and a great angle at the flag. So 
Well, a birdie can readily be made here. Tiger has a tendency to hit it to the center of the greens on these left to hole locations. It's uh, been pretty standard for him. So we'll see if he can go at the pin and not uh, favor the center and open the door a little bit for Mr. Scott. Well, this is a pitching wedge. I think he needs to be aggressive with it. Choking down about half an inch like he does so often with his irons. Just go away, Bug. This is the USAM finals. Very, very smooth swing there. Yeah, good looking shot here. They hit that so softly coming down, almost the same speed going back and through, and you see the difference in the spin rate. See how low he takes that club away, beautiful foot action, just rolls that knee in and just rolls him back, sags down the line, just beautiful, very graceful. Steve Scott also a pitching wedge. This from 123 yards, this whole location sets up well for him on the front left part of the screen. It does, this is a birdie opportunity. See if it's enough. Is it going to come back, Roger? I don't know if it's going to turn enough for me. He didn't spin enough. It's gone over that ridge. It didn't spin. It hit, I guess, on the top of the ridge, and he's giving away a big advantage there. Up, it just joined us. Steve Scott's lead was five up after the morning 18. He has won just one hole in this afternoon 18. His lead now just one up. Each year, the United States Golf Association crowns 13 national champions. Ten of those titles are awarded to amateurs, and the first amateur champion of 96 was Heather Graff, who won the women's amateur public links. Tim Hogarth of Van Nuys, California, was crowned the amateur public links champion. And 16-year-old Shane McMenemy won the U.S. Junior Amateur. That match went 19 holes. The junior girls title, 15-year-old Dorothy Dellison of Daly City, California, defeated Grace Park five and four. And just a couple of weeks ago, Kelly Keeney of McKinney, Texas, won her second straight women's amateur championship, beating Marissa Baena of Columbia, two up. She won that Lincoln, Nebraska's Firethorn, and next year she goes for the three-peat 97 at Brayburn Golf Club outside Boston. Nice going, Kelly. And it was her brother, Trip Keeney, who lost a very emotional battle to Tiger Woods at the TPC at Sawgrass when he made that miracle comeback. And Tiger Woods trying to stage a similar one here today. And Tiger has more of the hitman look on this afternoon than this morning. This morning it was a little, it was like he just wasn't there. He just hadn't quite gotten it together. But Whatever happened at the intermission with his brain trust, whether it be Harmon or Brunza. Brunza. Uh, Brunza is sort of his mental coach, just retired from the Navy last week. Uh, Caddy for him in the qualifier when Tiger won the qualifier. And then, of course, uh, Harmon has, uh, has been there all along and worked on a swing. And at the intermission, he said that his shoulders were a little open on his driver and he was hunched over a little too much. And on his putting, he was bent over also too much and wasn't letting his arm swing freely and uh, so it uh, obviously it uh, helps to have uh, good coaching even though you know never was that way in the old days but um, it's a science nowadays. Butch Harmon referring to Johnny also the coach of Greg Norman also uh, coaching Robert Floyd the son of Raymond Floyd who lost in the semifinals to that man Steve Scott. Roger. Well, let's back up Hill back up a just got passed and this will move slightly to his left in the last little bit of the putt. A little too much pace and that gets on by a good three and a half to four feet. Yeah. Sometimes, it's gonna sound funny, Roger, but sometimes I think it's almost an advantage when a guy's got a good birdie putt that you blow it by five or six feet because deep down he's thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't have to make this, you know, maybe uh, he's gonna might miss it. And uh, you, it's an interesting how that psychology works. Not that you really plan it, but uh, 
Uh, that look right there doesn't look like anything but Verdi, though. Now, this by Tigers is about a 20 footer and it will move to his right. And he's got to be a little more careful, really, with the speed than Steve's got because it will go away from him when he gets past the hole. So, as, as soft as he has to hit this to die it in there, is it going to break a lot at the hole? It, it should have some pretty good movement to the right at the end, yes. These are pen links greens, and they are cut and running at 12 on the stem meter, the fastest of any USGA championship this year. Tiger, three birdies on the front nine, an eagle at 11, looking for his first birdie in the back. to squaring it up. Scott still has par putt. It looked good with about halfway if it just slowed down. Looks good right there. And that's really the first little clutch putt he's had to make. This is not an easy putt at all. This is probably left edge or inside the corner if you want to hit it from in front. Last one of these he had that was, was sort of key, Roger, I think it was on five, that hole over the lake, you know? Mm -hmm. And he missed it. He, he sort of shook it off the blade. He sort of decelled on it. Missed, Just, a, missed a little one indeed as well. One up. And, and that ball literally went in by probably, who knows, a 64th of an inch. That was so close to a lip out. Ball's going away. The momentum's, momentum of the ball's going away. And you see that? Nearly Ooh. 360 degrees on that one. Tiger was watching it all the way. You got to be kidding me. He's uh, pretty businesslike right now. Next hole, Johnny. Par 5, 14th, 470. And they call this a five par, and uh, it, it's an interesting hole because it's like a four slash five, 470 yards, and it's downhill in the second half. You gotta keep it away from those bunkers on the left. Uh, Tiger's been hitting a three wood out to the right here and going in with a mid iron into the screen. And the tough part about this green is, do I lay it up short even though it's 470, or do I try to sneak it in his neck here and avoid the water on the left? And behind it, you have environmentally sensitive wetland area, which is just like a water hazard. You can't even go in to hit the ball. So darn near like an out of bounds, but uh, plays just a one stroke penalty. And you can see that beautiful view there. And this hole is causing problems. And uh, we've seen a lot of heroics. Tiger, Tiger's eagled this hole already a couple times this week. And it is a real honor to make it to this championship match final, especially when you consider all the entries that were taken by the USGA. Once again, better than 5,500 entries. And you can see that this championship has grown just a little bit since it began back in 1895. 312 qualified to get here. Two days of stroke play. The top 64 made it to match play. It takes six matches in five days, one, to be crowned the champion. And Tiger Woods is on the threshold of that, but he would have to come back to beat Steve Scott. And this hole has been very good to Tiger Woods. In case you haven't been following this week, uh, Tiger Woods did win the qualifying and he was able to go out every day. First off, enjoy perfect greens every day. First one out there, and that's of course Earl Woods, Tiger's father, who has orchestrated this tremendous uh, amateur career so far. He uh, began the barnstorming of the junior tournament tournaments several years ago. One interesting thing about Tiger's uh, career so far is 17 pro tournaments he's entered since 1992 best finish this year at the British Open, 22nd. Low amateur there. And the other interesting note about his pro Fight. adventures. Fight! Scoring average. Get down! 
73.79 scoring average, which for him is terrible. So he has not played well against the pros. He really hasn't, and he's got the capability right now going out and winning a U.S. Open. He could do it, and nobody would actually be that surprised, but every time he's teed it up almost, he's either had a bad round or the U.S. Open at Oakland Hills, he was looking like he was going to shoot 67, and I think he played the last five holes nine over, just one of the worst finishes ever. He's missed nine cuts, Johnny, in those 17 pro tournaments that you mentioned, so he's had his ups and downs. But still a young kid, 20. Steve Scott's only 19. This is another one of those draw holes that sets up perfectly for this man, and he hits it right down the throat, running with the fairway cut. Very nice. And the Gator from Coral Springs, Florida, clings to a one-up lead through 31 of this championship final at Pumpkin Ridge. Well, there's been a lot of speculation as to when Tiger Woods will turn pro or should turn pro. Maybe the best person to ask is a guy who knows all about the pressures that Tiger's facing. Phil Mickelson, like Tiger, won the NCAA championship, the U.S. Amateur, and struggled with the same decisions Tiger faces now. Here is a sampling of Phil's opinion. He has made one cut in his initial 13 or 14 events that he's played in, and to turn pro now would be, uh, it would be a risk, to say the least, because he doesn't have a card and he hasn't proven, that, proven to himself or anybody else that he, he can win immediately on tour. Now, he, he's going to win eventually, there's no question. I'm not doubting that, but I'm just questioning the timing if, if now is the time. Well, interesting commentary by Phil Mickelson, who won as an amateur uh, the Tucson Open, so he was Qualified. That was a year and a half before he turned pro, so I think he can speak with some authority on the matter. But this Tiger Woods, I, I think, is a, another notch or so ahead of Mickelson at this stage in his career, especially maybe for no other reason but distance. The distance is such an advantage. He has entered two upcoming PGA Tour events in Milwaukee and Quad Cities for an opportunity to perhaps earn a two-year exemption with a win, but Tiger has insisted that the reason that he is playing those tournaments is because yeah. school doesn't start until September 28th, and he says, I have a month with nothing to do after the amateur. Well, there's no use speculating. You know, there's a lot of speculation going on with Brunza just retiring from the Navy, but uh, it's just uh, premature, and I think it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, he's, it's his life. Let him lead it the way he wants. Well, the riches are there when he decides to go pro. Phil Knight, the CEO of Nike, has been in the gallery every <laughs> single day. Of course, he lives in the Portland area here, but uh, there's no doubt that that shoe company would like to lock up the services of Tiger Woods and a lot of other potential suitors as well. Are you ready for an Air Woods shot here, Roger? Well, this is right where his advantage shows, I think. He's got 215 to the hole, Johnny. This will be a turbocharged five iron that will go straight up in the air, and it's his ability to get the ball to come down softly that is really his edge. This was a big exchange uh, this morning, this hole. Tiger eagled it. Well, he has hit it just the sky. Air Woods at the right side of the green. Has come up just short. There's a, just a touch of wind against the players here. Air Woods, did Phil Knight hear that? Right. <laughs> uh, I now said he Steve eagled Scott. it this morning. I was mistaken there. Um, he did uh, birdie it this morning. It was against Joe Kripal that he eagled, eagled it. We showed that on the air. Steve Scott now from 202 yards, 185 to the front. This is a four. How's it look, Roger? He hit a good one this morning. Yeah. Well, this Beat is one. in right to left. Back. It looks good if the distance is right. Oh, this is really good here. Get tight. He hit very softly, actually. Nice eagle opportunity, though. Steve Scott, who commanded the par fives in the 18 this morning, looking to retake command on this par five 14th as the Army of Tiger continues to follow him in the fairways and the reaction of Steve Scott. Great pressure shot. 
He's not falling apart. He's playing good golf. If he loses, it's not because of what happened to Kreibel. Kreibel's game basically just dissipated and went uh, south. But uh, so far, Steve Scott is playing good, solid golf, even though he's lost some holes this uh, second 18. Well, hope you've had a chance to follow all the action from the U.S. Amateur Championship online at golf.com. You'll find the latest news, player scorecards and interviews, as well as historical information and day-by-day -day results. Also, golf tips, bios, and articles for every golfer. You can always tee it up on the World Wide Web at golf.com. And the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 under the command of Chief Pilots Rick Hoffaker and Mike Hance cruising the skies above Pumpkin Ridge, just about a half hour drive from downtown Portland and the blimp typically cruising at speeds of 35 miles an hour at an altitude of 1200 feet near record hot temperatures earlier this week and really as of yesterday, but today a much different day, much more, much cooler day, much more pleasant conditions for the golfers on the course. Well, Tiger Woods, Roger, uh, does not want to fall too down with just uh, four holes to play. Pretty straightforward shot right here, though, by Tiger. He's most likely going to birdie this hole, but it's going to force uh, Steve Scott to, uh, you know, to make this eagle putt, which is not that tough a putt. Well, as you say, John, not a real hard chip at all. Just the green running away from the player just landed on the front part of the green and just let it gather speed down to the hole. There's not a whole lot of break in it. This is one little pitch shot that I think his expectations will go beyond birdie, don't you think? Yeah, he's got to be thinking trying to make this because Steve Scott does have a very makeable bird, uh, eagle putt. Just uh, gently moves uh, at the hole, Roger? It just will slip left as it loses speed, but there's just not much break in it. And there's that new fashion statement, Johnny, you've been talking about. Tiger Woods tucking the sleeves underneath the shoulders of... Yeah, he does that. He looks like a sweater vest almost the way he does that. <laughs> he had it tucked a little neater yesterday, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's one down. Yeah, that could be it. a little ruffled. And everything he does is very much textbook. Uh, I'm sure he goes through his whole game with Harmon and his dad and videos, and every part of his game is just, just like a pro. I mean, everything is perfect. Play this off his right foot, play it back in his stance, just brush the grass. You don't take a divot here. Brush the grass every time he's brushing. Brush. Blow. Get that bug out of the <laughs> bug's trying to get a lot of air time. Totally dead handed. Just rock the shoulders, same speed back and through. Oh, that's gotta settle down. Yeah, that's uh, when you start thinking about making it, Roger, then that, that shot more comes into play, don't you think? Knocking it by five, six, seven feet. Yeah, but he's got it on the right side of the hole, yeah. John. Now he's got the uphill yeah. coming back up, so yeah. and he got a little carried away, but that's still very makeable. Well, besides the turnaround at number 10 for Steve Scott when he pitched the ball in from an impossible position, this one right here with the combination of that hole would uh, put him in a pretty good position if he could knock this in. Well, it's kind of like you were talking about a couple of holes ago. Now the Tigers hit it on high, about six feet, five and a half, six feet. Now the Steve's got to think, well, maybe I don't have to make this. You know, maybe, That's maybe true. Tiger will miss. Tiger Eagle, I mean, the last bar five they played, number 11. Well, let's set the stage for you if you've just joined us. This is the second 18 of a 36-hole championship match play. Tiger Woods, one down to Steve Scott. He was five down to begin the afternoon 18. Tiger Woods going for three straight amateur championships. That is unprecedented. But Steve Scott with a chance to win this hole with this eagle putt to take a two up lead with four holes left. like it wasn't going in either there he's awful casual <laughs> tiger has to make to have well the shoe is on the other foot last hole it was steve scott with the shaky little putt and now it's tiger is this about six feet roger this is just about six feet not much break in the putt back uphill it's the kind of putt you would expect him to make you know most of the time it's just at this moment and at this time and at this juncture in this match he had 
pretty tough. Yeah, you don't want to go two down with four to play. I don't care who you are. Well, look how far away Earl Woods' vantage point is. Now that's, uh, this is nail biting time for the Wood contingent right here. He misses his putt. He's got his work cut out for him. Tiger's mother, Coltita, also in the gallery. Huge miss. Oh man, you talk about the positive thing for Steve Scott. He was he didn't expect that to be a, boat, a par by Woods where he wasn't too. Four holes to play at Pumpkin Ridge. Par three fifteenth is next. 188 yards today. And you can see that the double bunker uh, in front of the green. Uh, this hole here, even though it's 188 yards, has been. A good birdie opportunity for the players, but for some reason, uh, some players have gone long, including Woods. So you want to keep the ball underneath the hole. You can see the hole location today, right there, back left, and uh, it brings those uh, bunkers more into play with that hole location. And again, you do not want to go long. So not much wind at all. Roger, any wind yeah, up there? Yeah. Can you feel anything? It is very still, John. What there is may be left to right, but it's negligible. Just slightly uphill, the shot? Uh, just a little bit. It's pretty level, but just, I'd say the green's probably five feet above the level of the tee. So at 188, not much wind, slightly uphill. I would assume it's either a big five for him or just a, I don't know. I think it's got to be a five. Could be a smooth four. Well, it is going to be a big five, John. He's got plenty of club to carry that front left side. Sounded solid. It is. He started it well right, drawn it back, but it's still right of the hole. But when you're two up, Roger, fairways and greens. That's right. You forced Tiger to be the guy to have to go at the hole. That's exactly what Steve Scott was thinking when he played the first two rounds of the U.S. Open. Shot well the first two days. Got a little cocky, he said. Started going for pins and ended up finishing well over a hundred in the field. Maybe he's learned something from Oakland Hills that he can carry over into this amateur championship. Well, let's see what he's got inside here, Roger. He's, this is clutch time for Tiger Woods. This is a six iron for Tiger. Way back in his stance. Gonna leave himself a side hill putt. Chance for birdie for Tiger Woods at the par 3 15th. But he's running out of holes for a chance to make history. Situation at the par 3 15th. Large gallery surrounding the green. Tiger Woods. Two down to Steve Scott, sophomore at the University of Florida. And Tiger Woods in birdie range here. Getting to that must make portion of this match play championship, Johnny. Well, if Steve can par this hole, which is a, not an easy uh, uh, birdie hole, uh, and force Tiger to have to make birdies coming in. He did uh, in his three peat for the United States Junior just across the river, the Willamette River over at Waverly. He was two down with two holes to play. He buried the hardest hole in the golf course on 17 and birdie 18 won the first extra hole. So he's been here before on a three peat uh, in the same town and came back from uh, tough odds. So uh, he's going to dig deep and see what heroics he can come up with. But Steve Scott might have a few up his sleeve. He might make a birdie before he's done too. Throw this out to the right, Roger, and let it just cruise down for a gimme. Absolutely. That's not the game plan. He's, he's got that ridge that's in his way, though, doesn't he? He has to put across that, but that's not a huge problem. That's in the very first part of his yeah. putt, Johnny. Yeah. Look at Looking this putt. If it gets there. Oh, oh, oh. Right enough. That's an easy par. I'll tell you, in match play, Roger, great putters are hard to beat, and this uh, Steve Scott, to me, has got the edge with the flat stick uh, right now. I think Steve Scott is a, an exceptional putter. 
Tiger's a good putter. Steve Scott is 19 years old, two months and 20 days. He would be the second youngest amateur champion. Tiger Woods, of course, was the youngest at 18 years, eight months when he won his first of two in 94. I'll tell you, under these heavy pressure conditions, they're still smiling this uh, nice uh, twosome here. And maybe this uh, young love is going to be tough to beat. Well, this is must make time, I think, John. This is Tom Hill. Move a little bit to his left. But a lot better being one down with three to go than two down with three to go. That's a tough order. So what do you think he has to play this? Uh, he's got to get the ball off the hole. Maybe a ball, a ball and a half, just depending what kind of speed he wants to hit it. This putt is really makeable. This is the kind of pressure putt you want. You just throw it out outside right edge, let gravity be your friend, and just pull it right down in the cup. This might be the match right here. He's got a tester coming back. But even more importantly, as the holes run out, it's going to be two down with three to go. And it's getting <laughs> gets tougher by the minute as those ties mount up. Straight uphill, Roger. Straight uphill. And don't lose your concentration here. Yep. Just a very makeable one on the last hole and the first one here. It's a lot of good at this point. Steve Scott two up with three to play. The par four 16th is next. That's a good par four, 432 yards. This is the driving hole, the widest driving hole, I think on the golf course, uh, 37 yards wide. You see that tree, that, these bunkers do not come into play, by the way, for either one of these players. See the bunk, tree on the left, that's 140 yards. Um, to the middle of the green. The pin is, uh, is in the front more today, but um, uh, from there you're hitting to a triple level green, and the green is actually back right. That's why I was pausing there. I was thrown off by that picture. Pin is back right, which brings the right bunker into play. Um, if you hit a good drive, it's a birdie opportunity, but if you miss the fairway, especially right, you're really in trouble with that bunker. So this hole really, there's plenty of room up there, but uh, Steve's got to be careful. Uh, this was, he hit it left yesterday in his match with Floyd and hit the cart path and went in the area. He could not play it, and it looked like he was going to lose the hole for sure. And uh, he got one of the all-time gifts from Robert Floyd when Floyd hit it long left, sort of technically unplayable, even though he did try to play it and won the hole and won the match. He and won the hole this morning against Tiger. Great. He likes it, Roger. That's a good one. Start in the center, going down the left side. Should be good. Nice. Woods made a bogey five on the 16 this morning. Scott parted. Well, you'll see some club head speed here. This is going to be another one of those hang times, about eight seconds. He's been hitting a high towering fade here, carrying it about. 290, 300 in the air. Not much roll in this hole. Nice, nice. This ball started at the left, cutting. That is good. Up the left side and long. And he got some roll. Mm. So Tiger Woods safely in the fairway at the 16th. Can he make a miraculous comeback against Scott? Steve Scott threatening to thwart golf history. Tiger Woods looking for the third straight amateur championship. Two down with three to play as they play the 16th hole. Both have hit the fairway. That's uh, the good news. Uh, 
Uh, that's Scott's ball, and uh, Roger, tell us the discrepancy between those two tee shots that were both hit as good as they can hit them. Well, 52 yards. Tiger Woods drove it about 320, has 118 yards left of the hole. Steve Scott has 170 yards left of the hole, and he's got a little bit of a problem. He's got a good angle, but he's in a little bit of a divot. It's filled in with sand. It's not sitting down real bad, but uh, he's going to have to get the ball solid because it is filled with sand, this divot. Well, he's got three problems. He's got the divot. He's a little bit downwind, so his hook comes in hotter, and it's a fade pin, which he does not hit. So this is uh, definitely uh, should be played more to the center of the green. Force Tiger again to make birdie, which he has failed to do the last two short birdie putts. So if he can keep making pars, unless he happens to have a good yardage for his shot, or a good pin placement for his shot. Don't go in the right bunker. This is a six iron. Didn't get it real solid. Got it going right of the hole. Looks Sit. like the bunker. Short side of the green too, Roger. Well, that's when he needs a sort of a caddy to say, do not hit it right. Remember, though, that's where he was this morning. Yeah, he lipped it out. Nearly hold it. Well, he probably will be thinking that, but uh, it's like a good lie. Not bad. Yeah, not as good as this morning's, but it's a good lie. A little different angle, slightly more to the left. But he wishes he had just got that on the green because it had three things going oh, against you. So you don't want to short side it on the right. Get it, all that green on the left. He's a huge green with big sideboards left. Uh, Roger, this is uh, just a wedge, obviously. Just the wedge. And it is time to be aggressive right here. You can hit it a little right of the hole and it'll kick left close. You can probably hit it a little past the hole and it'll come back and get short of the hole. I think it'll stay where it hits, so you should be able to get this ball inside at 12 feet. at it if it's the right distance. Will it come back? Yes, it will. That ball is probably two or three inches from hanging up in the rough over the green, the heavy rough. That was actually a, a fortuitous little bit of a distance there. Good shot, though. Let's take a look at this, folks. I'm telling you, if it went in one, maybe even a half a foot deeper into it, it would hung up. Watch this. It gets into the deep stuff, but just barely just enough to get it back. So that was a good good break there, and uh, we could be one down with two to go, looks like it. Next Sunday, the NFL on NBC is back, 12 noon Eastern time. Many of you will see the blockbuster doubleheader featuring football's return to Baltimore as the Ravens host the Raiders. Jimmy Johnson's Dolphins also take on the Patriots or regional action. That's the NFL on NBC next Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. Nine players have won back-to-back -back titles. Bobby Jones and Jerome Travers did it twice, but none of the eight before Tiger Woods have won three in a row. Well, this is the kind of hole he was looking for, Roger. Uh, he's got a nice short birdie putt. Steve Scott in a bit of trouble, even though he darn near hold this. I, maybe it's not that bad of a problem. We could probably, uh, if you remember from this morning, he literally lipped it out on, uh, watch this, this is from this morning. Watch how close this comes. Goes down in the hole and comes out. So he's got a good visualization of what to do on this shot, that's for sure. And good memories from winning the hole with a par because Tiger Woods three putted. Yeah, it's it was not gonna, on and two. So. That's not going to happen to this afternoon, though. So. Well, his lie's not quite as good as it was this morning. It's a little different angle. Mm -hmm. It's coming a little bit more downhill. So Tougher to stop of, it. Tougher to stop it. Got to land this ball in the frame. He could very well be putting first. He didn't have that crisp of lie as he did this morning, Roger. This morning he was on a little upslope, no sand behind it. And that one you could tell by the sound of it wasn't crisp and he couldn't spin it. So 
it's not the most enviable position to be in with just a one stroke one uh, up lead on Tiger Woods with two to play even though I'd like to like to give it a shot myself. You would. Oh, yeah. I would right now if he could David face that I can't get my amateur standing <laughs> back but I'd like to try for that one up with two to go. Be a nice exhibition for, for pay per view or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I'd be really shaken. Well Roger. Well, this putt from about nine feet will move from his left to right. He's had to ask Tiger to move his mark, so it's right in his line. Tiger will get a very good look at what's going on. Of course, and if it doesn't go, then Tiger's got two putts to win the hole. So that morning 18 looking uh, very good for Steve Scott. Remember, five up after the morning 18, Tiger's had to play catch up for a long long time was just one down after 13 but lost the 14th to Steve Scott they have 15 and here they are at 16 kind of break Roger and move to his right Sides, doesn't he? He's got a lot of faith in that button stroke, that's for sure. Is he reminding him to move his coin back? Which is uh, something you don't see a lot in other sports. Yeah, I don't know that Tiger had remembered to do that. Tiger was yeah. coming down, and Steve turned around and said, hey, move it back. Pretty good sportsmanship there, and had he not done that uh, David Fay what would have been the consequences he would have played from a wrong place he would have lost the hole how about would have been that a match how about that for sportsmanship in the heat of this championship battle you just don't see it in other sports it's commonplace in golf though just absolutely rule of thumb every week yep well if he loses this hole I think the smiles will be uh, gone until if he does win because I tell you one up is a lot different than two He saw the line. He knows what he's got to do, Roger. That's the last two, though. Nervous spot. And this time he's got it. One down with two to play. All I can say is, this is great stuff. Man, this is super. Par 4, 17th, 422 yards. And you can see this hole, how many bunkers there are. Uh, Bob Cup and John Foch just laid them in there on the right, and then this bunker on the left is definitely in play also. Uh, so you want to fit it in there probably with a two iron. Uh, Tiger will hit off the tee, maybe three, three wood. I don't think so, though. And Scott, I'm not sure. He might go with the driver. But um, you can see this little uh, hourglass-shaped green. And... Uh, Sort of a tough pin placement today, so it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting sh hole, definitely a birdie hole, and uh, the key is the tee shot. If you can hit a good tee shot, then it becomes a birdie hole. Don't want to miss it left. You can see just how narrow that uh, fairway really is. It just is serpentine all the way down there, but uh, between those two pot bunkers in this area, this is the key area. These are the two bunkers that are going to get the business. Uh, so. That's why the iron off the tee is to keep the ball more into this area in here uh, for Tiger. He does not want to go into those pots. Well, the wind has picked up slightly, John. It is back into the player's face. It's been it's very little wind all day, but it has picked up now probably about 10 miles an hour. This is a strong two iron, huh? Yes. a great birdie Roger he had to have it just had to have it hit a perfect drive perfect second and a wonderful putt and uh, now the pressures on Steve Scott to see if he can keep it together he's doing it he's doing what he's supposed to do part the last few holes Steve Scott made him 
make that birdie to win the hole. Yep. That par save. Sets up nicely for his draw. Oh, I'll tell you, whoever wins this championship is going to earn it. What a duel at Pumpkin Ridge. Tiger Woods and Steve Scott safely in the fairway at 17. Tiger Woods still looks for history. Steve Scott with his caddy and girlfriend, Christy Hummel. The only reason she's here is that Steve's aunt and uncle paid for her airfare out here. They didn't want to break up the team that uh, was out at Oakland Hills where Steve Scott played earlier this year. She says the only reason I'm here is because Steve's aunt and uncle paid for the airfare to get out here. And she is an incredible caddy. She's got such a good attitude. She gives him little back massages and takes care of him, lifts him up when he's down a little bit and encourages him. And I, I think she's she's been uh, literally his 15th club, I can tell you that. Steve Scott, one up with two to play. Tiger Woods, well, if he's feeling some good vibes from 17, etched in his memory was his approach to this par four 17th. And he really needed this at the time. He was uh, down big in this morning round. Ended up birdie. It's a beautiful shot. It's just hunting the hole right here over the top of the pin. Nice backspin. Or almost a winner. He was five down coming to 17 this morning. Made that birdie and cut the deficit to four. Steve Scott went on to win 18 to grab the five up deficit heading into this afternoon's 18. And here he is back again at 17. Roger. Well, Tiger has 172 yards to the hole. Steve's got 163. They're looking at Steve Scott's ball right now because it's come to rest right next to a French drain. Well, let's bring in USGA Executive Director David Fay again for this uh, rules explanation. Well, that's a uh, French drain. And assuming he's in it, he has to... What the standard drill is, is you take your stance, and using the club you expect to play the shot with, you establish your nearest point of relief and you drop within one club length of that point, no nearer the hole. You have to get complete relief, which means stance, lie of ball, and uh, area of intended swing, and you can clean the ball. Can he drop it through the, uh, the French drain or he has to stay on the side of the uh, French drain and his ball's on? No, well, see here, what he did was he established the nearest point mm -hmm. was uh, on the... Uh, well, as you can see on the left side. Downward side, okay. Yeah, yeah. But if he had wanted to, he could measure through that. It's not like uh, like a, like an obstruction. Normally, when you, you poke those French drains to see if there's the drainage gravel underneath, and that sort of guarantees that it's a French drain, and you can take your lift without even asking for an official in that situation, right? That's right, but the uh, uh, stone was uh, visible here, and uh, um, you had a referee with. Okay, Roger, take it over. 172, pin in the front left. The wind is against the players. Tiger's going with a six iron here. And I, and I like this choice of club. I think seven iron into this breeze, which is freshening, would be uh, a tall order. Choking down on it. Back in his stance. A punch. He Might kept it down, but he got up ahead of it, yeah. Johnny. It's going at the very, very right side of the green. And you could see it impact that his handle was ahead of the uh, ball too much. And then he tried to pronate after it was gone. It was too late. You'll, you'll see this right here. And he's not happy with this. He, he got it way back in his stance, which sort of makes you push the ball if you don't watch out. Beautiful for, uh, positioning there. But watch, he comes down. He's pulling. He's at way ahead of it with a shaft angle. And uh, that drives the ball to the right. Steve Scott from 163 will also have a six iron. Of course, if he knocks his stiff, he could win this match right here, two and one. And it sets up great for him with this pin over on the left side. Yep, he should go for it here. I really believe that. Put the hammer down. And he's hit it just left of the hole. He might need a little bit of a kick. Oh, a little unlucky. He got through the green. He's going to have a very delicate little pitch. Uh, back to the hole location there. He thought he hit it better than that. Not bad though, pretty close to the hole. Definitely inside a Tiger. 
Now Steve Scott is on the threshold of stepping in the way of Tiger Woods' march to history. He's one up with two to play. Roger, right now, if you had these two shots, uh, which one would you rather have? Steve's, because he's two up. No, I know that. One up. <laughs> Actually, one up. I mean, one up. <laughs> you still want it? No wonder you yeah, like that. I still that. want it. <laughs> I still want it. <laughs> no, but he's actually, he's got a little bit of grass behind the ball that's going against him. So he's got a tough little lie, John. It's only, what, about 20 feet, 18 feet? Yeah, yeah about 18 feet, maybe. But uh, no more than 20. You still haven't answered my question. You'd rather have Tigers or this one? I'd rather have Tigers. I'll tell you what, he knocked it in from off the green on 10. Darner hold it uh, on 16 this morning, so he's been pretty good stuff around the fringes and in the bunkers. I think it's an easy one to jam past the hole myself. But it, yeah, he was taking a practice swing there, if you noticed, where he started doing an Aoki karate chop move, where he took it up and just chopped down on it. Tiger's in a funny position, though. He's he's where he can't be leaving the short. He's got to give us a run, you know. He can't, and so uh, I'm not saying he's going to run it way by, but he I think he's got to know he's got to get it to the hole because otherwise you're giving a guy a chance to beat you. I mean, if you know to just close it out right here. Well, the green runs away from him all the way down to that spot, John. It's, this spot's almost hard to leave short. You know what I'm saying, though. He's you know he's in the position. He does not want to leave it short. He's got to figure I'm Tiger Woods and I've done great stuff in the past. Did it at Waverly. I've done it other places and uh, I'm going to do it again. So I got to get this there. I'll tell you what, right now his stomach is like uh, churning. I'm telling you, see that? Taking a deep breath, trying to get air. Did you see that? You could just see it on his face. Absolutely, that is, you just don't do that. Now Steve Scott still has a chance to have the hole with a birdie, but if he doesn't get it down, this match will be all square headed to 18. Yeah, you imagine that, Roger. You got two down, got three holes to go, and you birdie 16 and 17. Well, that was stunning, and I'm sure it stunned Steve Scott. He doesn't have much distance to the hole, not really any more than 20 feet, but the grain of the grass is sitting against him behind the ball, and the ball is sitting down a little bit. It's kind of a hard one to get a good touch on. It's be easy to jam this one way too hard. Leaving the pin in, I guess, because of figuring, well, it might come out a little hot. Usually you take it out when you mean business. No. It's all square. Unbelievable. All square. Spectacular birdie for Tiger Woods to square the match at 17, headed to 18. And on this par five, anything can happen. And you're exactly right. This 18th hole is, you could not have a hole that would tighten your collar more than this 18th hole. And let's look at this putt on, uh, again, on number 17. Cross the green. You got to have it. Humans, normal mortals do not make this putt. This thing is in the whole way. Now that will go on his highlight reel, I'm gonna tell you that. My gallery just loving it. Almost a surreal atmosphere. Wow. Wow. <laughs> He's seen a few of those go in. I know just how he feels because I had a lot of chances playing against Jack Nicholas and he would do that stuff against me. 
Well, let's take a look at this beautiful overhead on 18. You can see it. That's this hole over here on the right side of your screen. These bunkers in here have been given Tiger Woods problems all week because it's a draw hole. It sets up beautifully for a draw. And those bunkers on the right bring this wetlands area really into play. You can see that right there. And Tiger needs a good one here. And uh, he's been having trouble on dogleg lefts all week. And like I said, there's a bunch of them out here. There's eight dogleg left holes on this golf course. And Tiger has trouble drawing the ball in these holes. So he's got to take it more dangerously over the left side, which brings the wetlands into play. And right now it is crunch time for both of these guys. And there's quite a feeling when you finally get back to even. It's an easy time to have a letdown even for Tiger Woods right now. This is where you have to focus and trust your swing. That's probably the most important thing you can do now. It's only the third time Tiger Woods has played this 18th hole. Is, uh, is 282 yards, the third bunker on the right to clear. He's been in that bunker a couple times. And uh, now, see if Steve Scott can handle what's just happened in the last 30 minutes. He's sitting at the right side, trying to turn back. I don't think it'll be far enough to get to the bunkers, John. I should be OK. Got a big hop left. Real good, good kick there. Really good kick. It may be down to this final hole at 18. All square. The U.S. Amateur Championship in the balance. An unprecedented third straight for Tiger Woods. You're looking from high above at the par 5 18th finishing hole at the Witch Hollow Golf Course here at Pumpkin Ridge and capturing the beautiful shots from high above the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 and inside of the Blimp's gondola, a high technology camera system capable of tracking a golf ball in flight from an altitude of 1,200 feet. All square as mm -hmm. they play the 18th. And Tiger Woods is used to being in this situation his matches in the previous two championships that he has won have all finished up at 18. The two-up win over Trip Keeney and the two-up win last year at Newport over Buddy Marucci. So, Johnny, he not only continues to produce in this situation, he just is there time after time. Well, you just don't birdie 16 and 17 uh, uh, like that. And even consistently, he's done it in the U.S. Juniors. I mean, it's just amazing the insides this guy has, which is going to make him the special player that he is in the future even. And this drive even to me was really gutsy because he didn't draw it. He just had to hit it right across the corner. And uh, that's been a lucky banana there. Uh, he's Ever since he's eaten that, he's made two birdies, so. <laughs> Well, if the match is extended, they do go to the par four ninth. Pretty amazingly, uh, Tiger Woods seven under par the second round, which is after shooting 77 this morning, he puts another seven, but a good seven as seven under. So what more can we say? Just let's hang on and see what happens. Because this hole, there are so many possibilities. You can hit it out there and make all kinds of trouble. Uh, the second shot, you can have a problem getting over the wetlands. You can hit it, the pine trees, or the evergreen right and left. You can hit it down the collection area left of the green. This is such a hard shot. And look at how narrow it is. So this hole does not set up well for his hook, uh, Roger. No, it doesn't because of that stand of trees on the right, John. He's got too far to reach the green, really, I believe. He's got 285 yards to the hole. He can get it up in front like he did this morning, but I don't believe he can get it there. He needs that shot he hit on number 11 today where he played that little cut that didn't cut, but it didn't hook. Oh, and he has hit a hook. A low smother and got very lucky. Hit on the upside. Oh, and it scooted up that hill. 
That is a good break. That's a terrific break. That just barely cleared the wetlands, just barely. That would have been the end of this match, I would think, if that would have gone in there. But he's in bad shape right there. Tiger's got, uh, you know, he's just not the, got this whole one because uh, you can guarantee that Steve Scott, I don't think he's making bogey from there. That's a birdie uh, half the time from where he is right there. 50% of the time you make birdie from that spot. Yardage for Tiger, Raj. He's got 255 to the hole, 232 right. yards to the front edge. He's got an iron out, which is a little surprising. That's a long way to hit an iron. Well, he hits his two iron, Roger, easily 250, 260. So uh, this is just a comfortable two iron for him. Well, Tiger Woods taking a deep breath as well. Yeah, this is, uh, this is nerve wracking for everybody including us. Throw on top of it a chance to make golf history. In such a dramatic fashion. I mean, anybody can, you know, just cruise through and win, but this guy's supposed to lose going into 16. Birdie it there at 16, another birdie at 17. Standing below the ball, that could be a bit of a problem. Yeah! yeah. He's hit a towering iron shot. But it is going a little left. Yeah, they'll find the collection area, Raj. Watch it run right down to that uh, sprinkler box there. And he just missed out, and that is a very difficult shot. I'm telling you, that shot is just as hard as Steve Scott's shot right now. I'm telling you, that shot right there. Remember, Steve Scott was in this position yesterday. That is a very, very difficult position he's in, even though he's uh, almost uh, pin high. But he has a a shot that you could putt it, uh, you could chip and run it, you could hit a sandwich one, hop it in there, or flop it. And you gotta make that decision. Christy Hummel continuing to smile her way up the 18th. She is just such a good influence. I'd like to have her caddy for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even play. <laughs> Well, if you're just joining us on this dramatic 18th hole, it was Steve Scott, the 19-year-old sophomore to be at the University of Florida, who forged his way to a five-up lead over Tiger Woods, the two-time defending champion in this U.S. amateur. Tiger, 20 years old, a junior to be at Stanford, but Tiger Woods has whittled away at the lead. Three birdies on the front nine. He got the deficit down to one down at the turn. Steve Scott took a two-up lead, carried that well, all the way to 15, but then two successive birdies by Tiger Woods at 16 and 17 have squared the match. And Steve Scott's sitting there with about 100 yards. Roger will get fine tune it within that, but uh, he's in a very good spot where you can hit a full uh, wedge of some kind, probably a full sand wedge back in your stance. And Tiger's got one of those finesse shots that if you don't hit it hard enough, it'll come right back down to your feet. Well, the hard part, Johnny, from the angle that Steve Scott will have is he will have to flirt with that collection area. Mm -hmm. Being on the left-hand side, he is going to have to keep this ball right of the hole. If he hits it at, at the hole, he risks going down in there in three. He does have that draw working for him with the left spin, though. So this, this shot's right up his alley. This is a shot I like. Play it out right of the hole, 12, 14 feet. Hit it low and trap it in there with a little draw. Now, the only problem we'll have doing that is the ball is below his feet. So he has a bit of a hanging line, which makes it a little harder to hit that type of shot. i never seen a, a lie I couldn't hit hook, Rod. <laughs> well, the tremendous gallery here at 18, recognizing the fine play of Woods and Scott. And I'll tell you, this shot that Tiger Woods, I wish everybody that's watching this, including the gallery, could try to play this under the same situation, same pressure, both of these shots. Okay. What was the exact yardage again, Raj? 102. 102. My range finder said 100. tell by the sound of it it didn't stick on the face it just got a lot of grass between the club face and the ball and took the spin off of it but not bad he's got the kind of putt it breaks right to left Scott does but it's makeable and the gallery will cave in behind 
I tell you what, Tiger Woods, I think this might be the toughest shot he's ever had in his life right here. I'm telling you, this shot, it's a little on the downslope hitting uphill, which I'm not so sure that box is in his way. I, I'm not, I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to get relief, David. I think he's just clear of it on swing and stance. We'll have to see uh, if, if uh, it doesn't interfere with his stance and his swing. Uh, if it's just mental interference, he would not get relief, but uh, we'll, uh, the referee will walk him through this. One. It's, it's real close. It's one of those to follow through. I don't, I don't think would bother, but there are people that would take this drop. Yeah, and if you, if he does get the drop, uh, you see on the on the screen there how it will proceed. You can see the gallery closing in now. Yeah, the gallery closed the in green. so far. They're right on the front edge of the green, which, uh, of course, the smaller the circle, the less people get to see. So it's, they're 10 deep in there and standing in the bunkers and everything else. So this is pretty exciting. Well, Johnny, people. he's got a real decision to make here because yeah. if he if he tries to get cute and get the ball close, he, he takes a chance at losing the amateur championship right here. He can also hit, if he wants to, pass the hole and take his chances from there. But, you know, it's a big decision to make how you, you can, play it. You can hear three perfect brushes, four brushes. That's the secret on this thing. Swing with the slope and brush the grass so you don't chunk it short and come right back at your feet. If, he, if it doesn't get onto the green three feet, it'll come all the way back down to this box. said, Roger, that was a smart shot. And a shorter birdie try than Steve Scott. They both lie three. The match is all square. Uh, uh, people, you just don't know how good this was. The pick it off there on a down slope to an uphill chip. You see how he just brushed it off there, drove it into that bank, couple hops, bite, trickle. See how far back in his stance? And I'll tell you, it, this was not an easy shot. He just brushed it right off there perfectly. Mm. This is as good a finish to a golf tournament as I've ever been involved with. I'll tell you that. Give you an idea of how good the golf has been on this second 18 for both players. Steve Scott, who had the five up lead heading into the second 18, is two under on his round today and has still lost all of his five up lead. <laughs> so both players have been playing outstanding golf. Tiger has just been more spectacular at the right moment in the afternoon. I mean, Steve Scott, with his five-up lead, has done exactly what you needed to do to win 99 out of 100 matches. But he's playing Tiger Woods, <laughs> and that's the one in 100. Two birdies, 16 and 17, to square it up. Well, this is, I think, the, the premium putter of the two. I think that Steve Scott is the better putter, but maybe not under pressure. Moves left, Roger. It does, and it's quite quick. and it was in he's looking like it's gonna go in S stay up he said he so knows that. he hit a good putt the, he hit the exact putt he wanted it just broke a little more than he thought sets the, the stage Johnny for this birdie putt for Tiger Woods if it goes down he wins Roger he has a choice to make here doesn't he whether he goes ahead and hits a nice pace to get him a good chance to make it and it will go by four or five feet at that pace because this green is a like I said earlier it's about 12 on the stem meter the fastest greens of any USJ competition this year and this putt has got some trickle in it once it turns left it's heading downhill isn't it well yes and if it were me I would take the high route and just try to hit a dying putt Steve still has some work left to do and for the national amateur championship you know uh, who knows what the odds of him making that putt are he's putted very very well but uh, I certainly wouldn't want to leave myself in anything very long at this moment. I think I'd take the high route and just try to die it at the cup. We'll see. He just made a clutch putt at 16 and a heroic putt at 17 from across the green. And now he's hit a great chip to give himself a chance to win the three-peat. Right here, this is for his third straight United States amateur following up three straight United States juniors. It would be unbelievable, too, Johnny, in the way he's done it. 
three straight birdies at 16, 17, and 18. We'll leave it alone here, Tiger. It's all up to you. Seated to Tiger, Steve Scott still with this par putt to extend the match to the ninth hole. He misses, and Tiger Woods has his three-peat. Well, it was a sort of a disappointing effort by Tiger. That surely wasn't uh, anything to write home about, but it did get the job done. Forced him to have to hit this, what is a left edge putt, Roger, uphill. It's not a hard putt, maybe inside left edge, but under the circumstances, that hole's pretty small. Just try to rip it in there. Yep. Steve Scott answers the par at 18. The last time the U.S. Amateur Championship Final went to extra holes was in 1981 when Nathaniel Crosby beat Brian Lindley on the 37th hole at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. And if Tiger Woods wants a piece of history, he'll take more than 18 holes to do it. We're back with a completion in a moment. It'll take more than 36 holes to decide this 96th U.S. Amateur Championship. Tiger Woods and Steve Scott exchange pars at 18. And as we mentioned earlier, they head to the long par 4-9th, 463 yards. And this is a hole that's been giving Steve uh, problems with off the tee, so much so that he has elected early in the week to just play a 2-iron, if you can imagine, off this tee. And take a look at this ninth hole with its split fairway. Uh, it's like, it's perplexing on whether you draw it down the right side, which is sort of a Sk Steve Scott move, or whether you try to hit it through that little small fairway, which is only 16 yards wide on the left. And those bunkers are not a good spot, any of them. Of course, Tiger Woods can blow it way down here where he just has a nine iron or wedge like he did earlier today. Just had a wedge to this green, but uh, uh, it's a hole that really favors Tiger Woods if he can hit a good tee shot. Well, once again, if you just joined us in this dramatic 36 old championship final Tiger Woods faced a five down deficit to Steve Scott after the morning 18 but then Steve Scott on the 28th hole this is the par 3 10th and trouble off the tee playing a perfect lob shot into the hole for the birdie that put him two up as Tiger tried to continue with the challenge and then at the 29th hole Watch this putt up and over and around and in. That was an eagle on the par 5, 11th. And then it's 16. Two down with three to go. A birdie there, but the most spectacular moment so far saved for the par 4, 17th. This an unlikely birdie from 30 plus feet. And that squared the match as they headed to 18. They have 18, both with par fives. And again, for the first time since 1981, the U.S. Amateur Championship final goes to extra holes. And that 18th hole is full of a lot of what ifs. Uh, Steve Scott hit a sort of little muffy uh, second shot heavy that almost went in the wetlands, just barely cleared it, and somehow ran up the hill onto the flat in the short rough. Great break there, and then Tiger Woods his two iron from about 250 something yards, uh, 60 yards. He just barely pulled it enough to go down in the collection area, which is a very difficult spot. And you can see him. <laughs> the, the grounds crew has extra duty here. They've yeah, they're bringing in the pins. That's that old golf song. <laughs> pulled the flags already, and now they're hustling back out to uh, put them in as this championship match has been extended. And uh, J 
Johnny, we've seen so many dramatic moments from Tiger Woods, oh, and he's just 20 years old. But uh, that moment at 17 was, uh, I mentioned earlier, it was almost surreal movie-like. He had to have it, unlikely, but he made it. Right in the heart. I mean, just, you know, it's just special stuff. The putt at 16, of course, was big also, but 17, nobody makes that putt really on t after 16. And then 18, really, after the big tee shot, a little unlucky with that two iron to go down in that collection area. And Scott did get a great break on that second shot. That could have been in the in the wetlands area. So uh, a little bit fortunate for Scott to dodge a bullet there, but I give him a lot of credit. That five-footer coming back up the hill uh, for the U.S. Amateur Championship. There's a lot of kids that would have sort of ginched that over to the right or something or, or missed it left, and he had enough uh, insides to be able to put a perfect stroke on knocking in the middle of the hole. I agree. Uh, certainly well-deserved hoopla as Tiger Woods goes for his third straight, which has never been done before, but Steve Scott has proved equal to the test. And making that long walk all the way down, uh, really the ninth hole from the 18th hole. He got to walk the full distance of the hole. He's had plenty of time to search within and say, okay, I'm gonna play off with this guy. No more Mr. Nice Guy. And it's a, it's a tough hole. It's, a, it's got a lot of strategy, this hole, with that bunker, double bunker in the center of the fairway, and uh, it forces you to to uh, pick the shot you want to hit. Again, that's that overhead right there. You can see the double bunker that's in the middle of the fairway. And uh, uh, you got the players are coming, of course, from this angle here uh, uh, down there. And Scott most likely would drive it in this area here. And Woods drove it early in the day, way up in here for a wedge. So 50 yard advantage off the tee for Woods. But that bunker, that second bunker has gotten Woods before. This one right here has been a problem for Woods. So it will be interesting to see who hits the good tee shot because the tee shot could be the playoff and the championship. Well, the last five years for Tiger Woods, USGA titles, three straight, US junior titles, and coupling that with two straight US amateur championships, that is unprecedented. If he wins, he'll have a USGA victory in six straight years. We mentioned earlier a streak bettered only by Bobby Jones. Tiger has not led all day long. These gentlemen teed off at 10.15 Eastern time this afternoon. Or this morning, rather. So it has been a long, long day. And a long week as well. Monday and Tuesday to get into the round of match play. Top 64 advance after two days of stroke play qualifying. And then two rounds on Thursday to advance to the quarterfinals. The winners there moving on to yesterday's semifinals and then to end it all off, 36-hole championship, which has turned into extra holes for these two and, men today. And the pressure, uh, you know, people say, well, yeah, two rounds of qualifying and all these six matches and a 36-hole final and one yeah, other 36-hole day. But the, the really thing is the mental fatigue. Physically, these guys are in wonderful condition, uh, but mentally, uh, I would think for Steve Scott, this is really grueling to, to face Tiger at this stage in the tournament and then think that you're gonna win and have Tiger play this seven under par on you to get it to all square, man. So there's there's the massage again from Christy. I mean, Christy, Christy, you are the best. Pumping him up. So advantages to Woods here with his length. This has got enough width on it that he can sort of let it go. But uh, that second bunker is an awful long carry. He cannot quite carry that left, uh, the second of the center bunkers. It's about a 300 yard carry or 300 plus. gave it his full rip and not one little ounce of noise from the gallery. I don't know what that means. He's challenging that bunker, Johnny. Oh, he just airmailed the bunker. That is just, that isn't even fair. Good advantage for Woods. Again, remember he had the huge drive at 18. Steve Scott managed to match the par. Remember, the first player to win a hole outright wins the championship. Steve Scott back to an iron on this hole, Jim. Oh, man. It's a lot to give away. Uh-oh, it's drawing, is it all right? Well, it's going at those bunkers and oh, he's going down left, the left in between side. them. Yes, it's right in the middle, it'll be fine. Tiger's drive, it might be the longest of the week for him. The 37th hole 
of this championship Sunday. Who will prevail, Woods or Scott? amateur finals took place in 1981 at the Olympic Club in San Francisco when Nathaniel Crosby, son of the late Bing Crosby, beat Brian Lindley, one up for the title. It was the last time the championship match was extended beyond the 36 holes. And that coming 15 years ago, 15 years later, it's Tiger Woods and Steve Scott battling for the prestigious Havemeyer Trophy. Well, next Sunday, the NFL on NBC is back, 12 noon Eastern time. Expanded coverage as we get you ready for the season in football's finest hour. That's the NFL on NBC next Sunday, the special new time. Take note of it, 12 noon Eastern time. And then many of you will see a great doubleheader. Football's return to Baltimore as the Ravens take on the Raiders. Jimmy Johnson's Dolphins open up a new era. They take on the Patriots or check regional action in your area. That's the NFL on NBC next Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. And uh, what a discrepancy in drives, huh, Roger? Oh, you're not kidding, Steve. Scott has 207 yards to the hole, 186 yards to the front edge. Tiger Woods has but 122, so that's a drive of about 340. <laughs> well, this guy's been a scrapper all along. He can get the ball on the green. It's a hole that usually is parred by most people, so it's, you know, Tiger does have just a wedge, but he's got to get it on the green. He can't play Tiger's game. From here, you just want to get it on there, maybe get lucky and run it in their side of 15 feet and let your putter do the talking. That's what happened to Nathaniel Crosby. He one putted every green almost at Olympic Club when he won, and this guy's stroke is identical to Nathaniel's same kind of beautiful stroke. Uh, from this distance, he's got to hit some kind of shot that'll chase in there, John, something that'll bounce in there. Yeah. I don't think he wants to fly it up on the surface of the green. If he does, he wants to land it on the very, very front edge. It's been eight and a half hours since these two teed off this morning. Sets up for a draw. That's Scott nice. Going just left of the hole at the center of the green. Looks good, Roger. That's a good shot. Oh, that's better than good. Beautiful. That, that's an incredible shot in this situation with all the pressure. Now he puts the pressure on Tiger. Uh, that takes a lot of discipline when you're not a long hitter, just an average length hitter, to take a hole that's 463 yards and play two irons against Tiger Woods after he just hit a ball that went 340. He's got a very good lie in this right rough. Really, it's not that good an angle from this right side. There is a collection area to the right of the hole. So the ideal shot really here is to take it in just left of the hole as he did earlier today. There's that collection area we're looking at right there with the collection box down the bottom of it. You don't want it down there. Standing below the ball. Pick it up, Roger. A little left of the hole over by Steve Scott's ball and spin away. Who would have thought that he would be outside Steve Scott? And you do not want to, if you're Tiger Woods, two putt and give Steve Scott a chance to win it with his putter. Tiger Woods certainly familiar with the feeling of winning USGA championships. He's won five previous titles, including the juniors. And we asked him again what the U.S. amateur means to him. It means a lot because this is our national title. Um, we don't get this opportunity to play for a national crown very often, once a year. And when that opportunity comes, you know, it makes you feel, feel special that, you know, you have a chance to win our nation's title. And um, that's just something I've always geared for. Um, I geared for it in the, in the junior because that was, that was the level I was at. And uh, the amateur is where I'm at right now. And hopefully um, down the road, the Open will be, U.S. Open will be the same for me too. Well, he's absolutely right. In the amateur ranks, there's no tournament even close in importance 
as the United States Amateur, where the U.S. Open, you got pretenders, uh, the Masters and British Open are right there with it. So, you know, this is clearly the event for an amateur player. All day we've been trying to illustrate to you what exactly Tiger Woods' march through history looks like. The most USGA championships, Bobby Jones leading the way with nine. Jack Nicholas is next at eight, and then you've got Tiger Woods along with Jay Sigel and Jerome Travers at five, perhaps a sixth for Tiger today. Mm. Well, in the afternoon match, Tiger made birdie here in the afternoon round. Sliding that one in. I sort of feel like one of these guys is going to make it, Roger. Uh, I got that feeling, too. Tiger has the straighter of the two putts from about 18 feet. Steve's got just inside that, maybe 16, 17 feet. But Tiger's pretty much up the fall line of the green. Steve's probably move a little bit to the right, but they certainly are both makeable. And you, you got to know that these greens already were darn near perfect. They're as good a greens as I've ever seen. They're quick. But uh, the fact that nobody's been playing on them really the last couple days, I mean, these guys are getting, you know, perfect conditions to putt this putt from. So it's not going to go hitting any spike marks or bounce off line. It's either in or it isn't. Well, you like the first in wins theory? Yep. His mother, Coltita along with Earl Woods in the gallery. left of the hole and just stayed right there. So Steve Scott with his chance. And this was his reaction watching the missed birdie. And he knows I have a shot at winning the United States Amateur. Nobody can take it away from me. I got my first shot. Look at this. You talk about nervous time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Now from this angle, his butt should slide a little bit right. Yeah, that looks pretty determined right there, I'll tell you. I don't know if he's got the insides to make his normal stroke, but he's got a great putting stroke. This for the championship. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving it short for a chance for a major championship. Mm. 37 holes, still undecided. And the 10th hole, the long par three of which uh, Steve Scott has very good memories. We've seen the shot more than a couple of times today. Yeah, he's birdied the last two times he's played it. And you can see this hole, 204 yards. It uh, got a right hole location, which you wouldn't think is that great for uh, Steve Scott with his draw, but he knocked it close uh, early this morning and then, of course, hit a right of the green. We saw that wonderful flop shot that uh, had a little bit of a wreck with the pin and went down and in, uh, which was probably that gave him the opportunity to be in this playoff. I think if I think that that was uh, he was going to lose the hole and ended up winning. And that this was a two sort of a two uh, way uh, change here. Instead of losing the hole, he wins it. So to me, that was the whole match for him to have an opportunity to go in the extra holes. Well, he's got great, great uh, memories here on this hole, and if he were to, who knows, birdie it again, I don't know, he'd probably get down and kiss it like Constantino Roca. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. I think this hole sets up better for Tiger. Roger. You would with his fade, certainly, that Steve's hit that draw twice and, of course, missed the green once right, but it's uh, kind of a risky shot to hit something shaped right to left in here. Tiger with the six iron. 
I'm sure he's just aiming at the left side of our tower. If he can get the ball to cut a little bit, that would be perfect. Dodged a pretty good little bullet on that last green. You give Steve Scott a clear in putt from that distance and good chance to make it, but um, he dodged that one, new, new life here. Shot starting left of the hole and cutting. Good looking shot. Great shot by Tiger Woods. Absolutely a gorgeous golf shot. Just couldn't be hit better, could it, Roger? That was exactly how you draw it up in the diagram. <laughs> High fade. Only about 40 feet higher. That was just a moon ball. So the pressure once again. 19-year-old uh, Steve Scott. He's answered every time at crucial times. I could see from his face on that last putt when he knew he had a chance to win it right there. Nobody could take it away from him. His facial expressions totally changed and uh, breathing patterns even looked different. Might have been a little too nervous there. See if he can regroup here. Oh, got it started right. He's trying to draw back. It's at the very, very edge of the green. Needs a bounce. Break it got out of the primary oh, rough though. Caddies, please. Right. Please well, a big advantage for Tiger Woods. Is he just a few moments away from finally putting away the three peat? We'll be right back. <laughs> Still walking with a nice spring in his step there. Adrenaline will help out a little, but what a great shot Tiger Woods hit. And really, Steve Scott's ball, just another two feet more left. It would have got out of that fringe and trickled down right by the pin. So it's got an interesting lie. Looks like it is down grain. He did pitch it in from just about eight feet from there uh, not too long ago, a couple hours ago. And it is a makeable kind of pitch shot. The only thing is, is in the process of trying to make that, Roger, you probably will knock it by, you know, five, six feet. And uh, so. It's that collar behind his ball could be a bit of a problem. Very similar to the chip he had on 17. Uh, not much from the hole, not much more than 20 feet. It is going dead away from him. And if, if he lands it on the green, unless it hits the flag stick, I just can't see him keeping it inside of, oh, six, eight feet. So very likely he'll be putting before Tiger's, what you're saying, if he goes for it. And I think if I was him or I was catting for him, I was saying, hey, Tiger Woods from here is going to probably make it seven out of ten times. We got to try to make it. Forget the par. We got to we got to get this. A, give it a run, and uh, maybe maybe you want to trickle it in, but you do want to think about making it. Roger, how close is Tiger on his birdie attempt? Oh, not much more than seven feet, eight feet. Very very makeable. And you see, he's trying to figure out whether to stand with his foot close together or way back on a wide stance. But he's playing it behind his right foot so he can get the club on cleanly. Oh, nice shot. Took a run at it. Exactly what he was thinking. Huge advantage to Tiger now. Steve Scott, if he ties this hole with Tiger, he's got to be pretty fortunate. Mm. So they're checking to see who's away, Roger? They are. Trey Holland will come in and pace off. That's Holland and he's uh, determining who's away. He has determined Steve Scott is away. Now there's going to be a second consideration. He's going to pace it, I guess. But well, he may pull out the string. Yeah, he probably uh, he had pointed at Steve Scott originally. Or well, it's. Obviously for Tiger, if uh, Tom he, if he knew screen. that uh, Trey, uh, Trey says that uh, Steve Scott's away and Steve were to miss, obviously Tiger, it's a formality just lagging it down there. And I think Tiger would probably just as soon uh, not be away. And uh, Steve, of course, would rather have Tiger show his cards first. He doesn't want to miss first. You never want to show your cards first. In a pressure situation, always let the other guy show his cards first. There's the string. Uh, 
And Tiger, Tiger is away. away. Yes. Tiger Woods is away, yes, and he will go first. Well, this putt will move a little bit to his right. Quick? It is quick, but not dangerously so. I don't think it's anything to really be scared of. It'll move reasonably sharply to the right if he doesn't have enough pace on it. But he doesn't want Steve Scott to have to hit his putt. Let's put it that way. This for the three, Pete. Looks like a cheetah hiding in the grass, ready to spring on something. Remember, Tiger Woods has never had the lead in this entire 36 old match, which began more than eight and a half hours ago. I always contend that the easiest putt to make under pressure is a downhill or you just get it started and let it do its thing. You don't have to hit it real hard or real good. Just get it going. And uh, this would be a major disappointment to this fellow right here if he doesn't make it because he knows this is a great opportunity. Standing up very tall like uh, Butch Harmon told him to do at the intermission. break. Nope. It's two putts and uh, three holes. The putt at 18 was very disappointing. Didn't even come close. And that one there, uh, obviously, uh, he <laughs> to get the brass ring, he get, did all the heroics to get there to get a chance to get it. And now it's like, boy, he'll want it so bad, maybe too bad. Steve Scott, but the pressure tester for par on 18, sank it to extend the match to the 38th hole. Roger. Extra holes, and now at the 38th hole. This is not an easy putt, right? It is up the hill, isn't it? It is back up the hill, probably a left edge putt. If he wants to rip it, he might can keep it inside the hole but to stay alive. Yeah. It's tough to make these when you got this much on the line. It's Tiger's putt has not yet been conceded. Well, Tiger's a couple feet away from making history. A bit of a gift there by Steve Scott, but under the situation, I can understand it. He did himself proud regardless of what happens. Yeah, he just hates to now realize it's all over but the shouting. I guarantee this is the longest one footer he's ever had. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's making him putt it. I'll tell you, it's amazing the thoughts that go through your head at this position right here. Yeah. Another Tiger comeback completed. And with it, golf history. Three straight U.S. Amateur Championships for Tiger Woods. Oh, yeah. Woods coming in. Mother and father. There's that famous hug where tears will be exchanged. Bobby Jones have won three straight. Steve Scott pushed it to the 38th hole of the championship match. I, I don't know how I took it that far. And let's go down to Roger Maltby. Well, gentlemen, congratulations on a well-played, if you turn around a little bit, Tiger, on a well-played final. Tiger, a place in golf history. You never led until the 20th hole. Uphill battle all the way. Oh, it was. I got off to a horrible start this morning. Um, you know, I didn't really have it in this afternoon. I knew what I had to do because I'd been there before. And it's just a matter of going out there and doing. I didn't make any putts until the very end when I, I guess I really needed them. And uh, it's just a hard fought battle all day. Excuse me, I've been here so long, it was 38 holes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when you dominated the first 18, uh, that's for sure. Yeah. You played very, very well and played well in the afternoon. Tiger just kind of put the afterburners oh, on. Oh, yeah, I knew he was going to do that. I mean, you know, he's he's famous for that. And I knew five up was 
I mean, it's a pretty big lead, but with 18 against against this guy, it's uh, it's nowhere close to being enough. Well, Tiger, we got to ask the question: What does this do to your feelings as to whether you'll turn pro or stay in school? I really don't know right now. <laughs> I just know one thing: I'm going to celebrate like hell tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was certainly one of the best matches I've ever seen. Congratulations to you both. Thank you very Back much. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Roger. Let the celebration continue for Tiger Woods. Three in a row. The historic one comes at Pumpkin Ridge. What a championship final day it's been. 38 holes to decide it. Tiger Woods wins it. So for our entire broadcast crew, for Johnny Miller and Roger Maltby, I'm Dan Hicks saying so long from the 96th U.S. Amateur Championship, a three-peat in the books for Tiger.